What's up guys, you're on Meet Tree Boy for Life. I just wanted to show you something really quick um, with the Crick. And I just had my other one um, came in, so I have two of them. But I wanted to show you something because if you're using um, the Crick, let me take one off and I'll give you an idea what I'm getting at. Sorry, I got the one hand on the camera too, so it's gonna be a little funky. But it's really easy to use with one hand, which is just insane. Um, again, it's just really insane. Let me take this one out of here. This rope. Come on out of here, baby. There we go. Alright. So when you're running, again, I think this is um 117. Um, this Yale cordage, um, what I have here. Uh, and I meant to tell you guys too, uh, before I finish, I got this rolling lock too. I had got this um this is CT climbing. This is a really good device too. I mean, it's funny these rock climbing guys use this a lot, but I said, man, I seen a couple guys, you can use it for like a lanyard adjuster and a couple other things, but I got that too, guys. So that's a really cool little device. I haven't put them to work yet, but I, like I said, I'm, I'm modifying some things, changing some things, but I wanted to show you this with the Crick. Um, there's configurations with this. Now, now I'm just gonna do this as if this was one rope and you were going to use this as a progress capture, almost like a ascension device to pull your um, body weight up, which you can do. And I'll show you in here. You can do it, but it's awful tight with this 11.7. I mean, you would almost have to run a smaller diameter, um, a smaller diameter. Um, what am I trying to say? A rope, because you got to understand, I'm going to show you guys something that they don't really show you a good, good video of. Those little teeth are jagged and they will grab. Um, it's just like any other typical ascender or everything, but but you could say the bigger the rope, you know, the more friction that's in there and the more space that you have that it doesn't cover. So it's more chances for it to kind of bite on that rope. And also less space for you to go through here where my thumb is at to put the rope in the pulley situation, kind of like it's set up here if you were gonna pull down and pull it through. Um, so that's just one thing. Let me, let me run that around there. Yeah. So. So if you were going to pull through like that. So this rope is really technically too big because I didn't understand this when I got it. But I understand now is that there's configurations on the back when it says the first part says eight plus eight to 12 mm. Um, I'm sorry. No, it's 10 to 12 mm. Then you have eight to 12 mm. And then you have um, basically ropes less than 11 mm for the pulley part. And you can kind of see why, because you have that big old little little um, tab there that keeps your um, roll. I mean, keeps your um, your little um, teeth, the teeth from coming back too far. Basically, your your cam right here, whatever you want to call this piece. I don't know what the technical reference is for it, but anyways. But so you have only a very limited space here to run this as a pulley. So those show the different configurations and what ropes will work better with this device. So. If I was to go out on a limb and say you would almost be better with a smaller diameter rope if you're going to use this, although it will still work with a big rope, but preferably a newer rope when it's not really bulky because you kind of run out of space. But here's the only default. So when you when you go to do like that and when you want to pull your cam down and I'll pull it and you can just see it ain't it, it's not smooth as it would be because there's a lot of friction in there, guys. I mean, a ton of friction. Um, I wish I could do this with two hands, but it's just hard to, to do to to show you guys. But but please believe it, it. It's just even when you pull it all the way back, and you pull it back, sometimes you'll notice. Cause see, it's all the way back inside. I'm sorry, my big fat hand was in the way, but you'll see it'll come all the way, and it can only come when you. That's what I'm saying. When using that rope like that, it can only come but so far. And I'm sorry for the camera angles, but. So that rope won't be able to slide out. So you can't use it unless you have a smaller diameter rope because that cam can only come down so far with a T-far because you have the bigger diameter rope. And that's why they have those clearances on the back here for you to be able to, you know, know what you can do and what you can't do. Because otherwise you're not going to be able to, to come c c use that cam. But you can always just do this, take the rope out. And then once you do that, um, then when you pull that, that lever there, and I'm trying to do this, so I'm looking and doing it too. So you pull your lever and then you're more apt to get it to come down. Let me see if I can do this. 
Let me just tie that around this right there, and that would be perfect. Okay. And so now I'll pull this back. And that's another thing. See, even with me pulling sometimes, sometimes it don't act like it wanna come. Cause it's done snagged the rope. It'll extend really good. So see, um, and you can kind of see there. And this is a newer rope right here, but you can almost see where it picked the rope. And now, see now to come back down because it ain't it didn't pick the rope. So it'll it'll slide. So once it picks, it has no op, no way of coming down. I mean, with two hands, of course, it'd be a lot simpler. But I'm just trying to show you this, guys, so you'll know if you do decide to buy it. Um, and it's not a drawback for me because, like I said, it will it will slide, but you can almost hear it. Listen. You hear that? So you'll get, it'll pick your rope. Um, but sliding up is no problem. So that's all I really need it for anyway, to grab. I just wanted to grab and, <laughs> and so I'll be able to do it. So you can see there, it'll pick a rope. It will pick a rope. But that's, I mean, that's not nothing that's outside of the norm for these type devices. So anybody who knows, knows. So it's not a necessarily a drawback, but it's just one of those things you have to be cognizant of. Because if you, you don't understand that, and you've got a brand new nice, you know, this is a double braid here, and you're trying to do something, a certain configuration or something, and you realize that, you know, it'll pick your rope a little bit. Um, and that's what could happen. So you just have to be aware of that. So that's the only drawback so far. Oh, got this. That's the only drawback so far um, with this device that I've um, seen. And... I thought about and now this is just me because I'm always doing something silly, but I thought about maybe filing those teeth down a little bit because what I'm going to use it for is not as, you know, as I don't need something that has those super sharp teeth. But I'm just thinking about kind of like I like the like like with the rolling lock, you can see they got the nice grooves there. And this thing is really nice. I mean, it, it holds up really good. I mean, it tests really well. So I would wish just in my opinion, if they would do something like that with the, the crick which would probably make it unstoppable i mean and let me see here i'm gonna jump over here sorry for all my junk too i got junk everywhere but i'm gonna I'm show you something with the grillion um while we're at this and i'll show you why i favorite the grillion so much over these years um and this is a different grillion, like i said than what i have on my um on my belt there's a couple variations of this and they, they just keep changing it but I don't know which model this is, but I always take the screw out, which they say don't do it, but I don't really care. I'll just take the screw out. But but you can see the cam in this is really smooth. It's always been that way, and it just works. I mean, it's so much friction on it that it's insane. And let me see if I can pull this out over here and I can show you on my second lanyard. Let me pull. I got so much junk in my van. I'm sorry, guys. Pull this out. Uh, which one is this? No, that's the one. And that's, that's my rock exotica there. And here it comes. It's coming. And I'm gonna show you uh, as soon as this bad boy pops. Before I carry this long lane, that's my second lane, so it's super long. There it goes. So you can see the difference in the grillions here. Um, so I got this grillion here, and it has a lever back here. And of course, this was circa what 2000, 1996, and this is circa I don't know. It says made in France. I don't have any information on this. Is actually a little. Well, actually, it's a whole different device. Now, oh, no, no, it ain't. I got the feet that way. There we go. So that's them stacked up. And I'm sorry, I'm kind of, like I said, I got one hand on the camera, but I'm trying to show you. But but anyways, you can see, man, this thing, it just glides through here really smooth. I mean, it, it's real smooth. But the minute you go to put some friction on it, um, it just grabs. Oops, let me take the foot off one side of the rope so you can see it's just that. But yeah. So that's the downside. See, it's so smooth. But the minute you try to pull that mug out, ain't nothing, you know? I'm going to try to step on it again for you. So I'm stepping on it. But see that? How that locks there? But that's all smooth through there. So I don't know why that, that on the crick has to be so jagged. But I understand it because it's a different design for a different maker. Italy versus... Where is this one made at? This one was made in, oh, this was made in France too. So, you know, different manufacturers and stuff. But anyways, guys, I'm like, that's why I say everybody has different use for different equipment. And so 
you get whatever works for you and what works best for you but it's good to see a review like this because you are able to make an educated decision based on what you have and what your setup is as to what you use and why you use what you want to use and again it's all preference guys never let nobody con you into buying something or or guilt you into buying a certain product because that's just not how that works you have to use what works for you and what's best for you that's why like i said when i seen these i absolutely love these things i'm i can't I can't tell you how much I love for what I'm going to use them for, how much I love these devices. But that's me, you know, and I don't really, you know, I don't use a whole lot of mechanical stuff. I mean, outside of the grilling, um, I probably use this more than anything. And of course, my my rope grab here, which is as old as dirt, but this rock exotica, you know, and then I got a new one. I ain't put them on yet. You know, I got so I got stuff, you know, that, and I buy stuff from time to time, but I, I don't always use all this stuff, you know. It's just like with, with, with draws. I mean, you can only wear one pair of draws at a time, you know. Socks, you can only wear a pair at a time or maybe double them up, you know, like carabiners. You know, you might have 20 carabiners on your belt that you use probably more than anything else you use, you know. So, you know, figure out what works for you. But but like I said, this Crick, for me, is one of the best little devices for what I'm going to use it for. And that's what my game plan is to really. And then I think once you break this in, and that's what I'm really waiting for to see how well this spring holds up in here. Um... This string, of course, I'm almost certain this thing is going to break, but I, I'm probably have to go do something else to fix that later on. But I, I don't know. But like I said, I just got these. I uh, hadn't even put them to work yet. I hadn't even had a climbing job or anything. What we we were doing a little clean out job in. Um, a buddy I was helping. Um, so we hadn't really been doing much um climbing, but again, just a closer up look of this device. And a lot of people have ordered this device and they haven't got it. The only way I got this, guys, like I said, I was on eBay, and I'm pretty sure if you were up against me, you probably did not realize how much money I was willing to pay for these because I wanted them so bad. I didn't want to wait. I could have did like everybody else, but the guy who I got these from off of eBay, he um he ended up um going through Europe, and he sent me. He said it took forever to get to him too, but as soon as he got them, he just put them on eBay, sold them, which I was shocked. Maybe they didn't work out for him, but at any rate, I told him, and I told him straight up, I said, bro, I appreciate you. Cause I said, hey, I, I just got into the. I, I've always liked CT climbing stuff, you know. But but and I've had a Cinder's it back. If you ever, if, way back in the day, it's one of my videos. I'm I'm almost certain I have it, but it's like a small snippet. But I had bought a whole bunch of stuff from the pawn shop, you know. Guys had, um, what did they have? They had all kind of a Cinder's. I had a pulley, um, pencil pulley. I had all kind of stuff like the zip line style pulleys. I've had. Man, I've had that stuff since the beginning. I say that to say this. I've had it since the beginning, but I just never used it. Never used it. Never found a reason to use it. But now I, ha I have an understanding of my climbing abilities and my climbing style. And that's why I choose to use what I use. And I like what I use. And I still love hands down. <laughs> like with climbing. Let me see if I can pull it out of here. And there's that meal, guys. I got, I just, like I said, I just got stuff thrown all over in my spot here. I don't even know if I can lift that thing up. I got me old two back right here. Snaps. Ah, yeah, move you out the way like that. There we go. Throw some stuff. I just got my stuff all over the place. I had a job, and I just, man, I just, I don't be thinking about nothing. But this is my all-time favorite setup, guys, and it's already pre-tied. I don't have to worry about setting it up in the tree or whatever. But when it comes to this hitch climber pulley setup, guys, um, there has been nothing more instrumental in my tree career than having something like this to use to climb with. And that's still with the blue rat pod. It's not even the new, newer hitch climbers that DM makes or, or the other notch makes them. Everybody makes them now, but it's still the old um, style. It's still got the, the Yale quarters, the B-Line looking um, Grizzly spliced um, out of eye sewn spice. This is still my favorite one, favorite design and favorite one, but I have more. But I still find myself going back to this style all the time. But anyways, it's again, it's preference, guys always change different carabiners i mean technically this is not an oval carabiner but it works in here so i don't complain but still guys this this right here so i say that to say this i still prefer friction hitches over these type devices but i still love certain ones and i get them and i use them for their purpose and i and that's it so long story short guys i just wanted you to see that and again the crickets is it's, it should be hopefully coming soon for some of you guys who ordered them um and I hope you get them because you're going to love this device. I mean, this this replaces so much stuff. It's insane if you got different types of systems. But but again, guys, like I said, I just don't want to drag this out. But this is still a really nice device. 
if you're in the market for something like this if you can look at the videos that's out like i said i can't i'm not gonna really get into all the ones because they have their own um on ct climbing their website they show you all the functions of it like i said the barlet man uh he's got different videos on it and i'll eventually show you videos with me using it um and then we can go from there but but again you for, i think everybody who knows gear enough can get a great idea whether they can use this or not and hopefully this was uh, again just a lot of you know cleared up a few things and possibly help you to see you know is this device for you and maybe should i buy one for me and my guys or buy a bunch you know i got two i might even get some more i just i shouldn't be spending money on cricks i got other stuff i should be probably spending money on but you know how it is us guys with gear junkies i said when i seen it i said i had to have it and i like i said like i said like i said these guys on ebay did not know i was gonna pay whatever i had to to get them because i could get them right now versus waiting months at a time but anyways peace out you want me to go for life oh yeah i was gonna say too guys i get this little top handle saw here i found i just got thrown up in here because like i said we was working and um that's an old school that's a 3570 or something like that what is this oh no a 3450 yeah, that bad boy, I, I was really shocked, but it runs really good, you know. It's a really good saw, you know. I got the, of course, the T540i off gates, right? That's my favorite, but I use this little bad boy on the ground, too. I, I'll tell you guys, I got away from using the big, big saws. I, mean, I got big saws, but it's just like, just get something light, you know. The older I get, just use it, whatever works, you know. It ain't ported, it ain't nothing special, no special bar, no special chain. It just works, you know. That's what you learn to do with any gear and all that and of course i hope to plan to put something up for the um, rolling lock uh eventually but again made in italy i mean it's just man this is this little device too i mean i almost could just got away with doing what i want to do with this but i want i want the cricks too i want the sparrow i want to get it all because when i seen the configuration of it um and i know i said i was gonna i keep talking but i was gonna finish this video but i i just have to say this one more thing uh i seen this on instagram the guy had the sparrow and the crick and he was actually on the, a window sill. He was looking like he was on the side of a building. And I said to myself, because like I said, I, I, I don't do a lot of single rope or SR, SMS or SRS, whatever you want to call it, single, stationary, single rope, whatever you want to call it. Um, but I seen how easy he just pulled himself up. I mean, he barely used any kind. I mean, he had no kind of foot device or nothing. He just used his hand and pulled himself up a little bit and just took the slack out just a little bit. I said, oh, snap. And I seen that, so that's what really got me with the crick. And then eventually, so I got the rolling lock first from Barlett. And that was still, I mean, they I think it was selling for like 50, but it ended up being like 75, 80, probably after taxes, maybe even 90, I can't remember. I got the, I got these for 90, 90 and 91 on eBay. Of course, like I said, I paid extra. I was willing to, and I'm going to tell you the truth, guys, I was willing to go about 150 to 160 on both of those. That's why I said, so guys probably didn't have a clue who were bidding against me what I was willing to go for. But that's just me, guys. I just, I know what I like. And when I like something, I just go and get it. I think that's most of us, you know. So anyways, peace out. You want me to buffer life. Hope this video helps.